It's bigger than 25, isn't it? <laughs> oh, thanks, Blake. You know, thanks for million. Well, no, really, I appreciate it, really. I wasn't accusing you. Oh, I don't think you're accusing Douglas, unless you've got a very funny way of confessing. Stevie, I wasn't accusing you. I swear, the thought never even crossed my mind. For oh, God's sake, Douglas, tell him, was I accusing him? No, oh, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Money really brings out the best in people. So what do we do? Hey? Well, you've seen where this is likely to lead. If we go to the police or investigate it ourselves, we're, we're not going to have a friend left between here and the Canaries. Not if we're subtle about it. Look, it must have happened some time between us leaving Frank's and getting back to the boat. I'd say it's got to be about an hour. Now, what we've got to do is keep absolutely stum about the ticket going missing and find out what they were all doing during that time. Except that we mustn't let them know that's what we're up to. OK? We've got to be really subtle about it. Hello, Delgado. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't know this was one of your eating places. I'm here nearly every morning. Really? <laughs> ah. I must have heard you talking about it. Hmm. Anyway, I thought I'd give it a try. May I? Please. Oh. <sighs> Shame you couldn't stay on last night. Mm. You missed a really great meal at Marriott's. Yes, it was a pity. Yeah. Anyway, business before pleasure, right? Absolutely. Anything interesting? Uh, don't mind me asking. Uh, but I'm really interested in your line of work. And Blake, he never wants to talk about it. <laughs> I think he believes most of it will be over my head. No, nothing interesting. A routine exchange of unimportant information with an acquaintance in the police force. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone I know? Uh, Captain Ramirez. No, I doubt if you know him, no. <laughs> mm, no. Actually, I think I heard Blake mention him. Anyway, what do you recommend? Churros. Paco, uno churros. Sí, sí. Yeah, funny things, Alibis. Yeah? Yeah, I was just thinking about a case back home. Money got nicked from an office one afternoon. Inside job. Only three guys could have done it. Answers on a postcard, please. Ah, it's interesting. When we asked them where they were, two of them couldn't tell us. Didn't have a clue, not a clue. You're joking. Oh, well, after we leaned on them a little bit, you know, they could tell us where they were. Some of them, there's only one eye in Philip. But the third guy, he could account for every single minute. And um, it was him, right? Obviously. I mean, an innocent man can't tell you what he was doing five minutes ago, let alone prove it. Doesn't need to. Well, that sounds a bit iffy to me, that. Well, well for instance, I bet you couldn't prove to me what you were doing yesterday. Um, say, after the three of us left here last night. Last night? Yeah, I could. I got a fiver that says you can't. Uh, <laughs> you are on. <laughs> Everything all right, is it? I mean, uh, here at the paper. What? Well, I was hearing... Uh, I, I, I heard things were a bit tight. Who said that? Oh, uh, Yes, well, things are fairly tight, Douglas. They always are. But I suppose they're no worse than usual. Oh, well, that's, that's good then. That's very good. Look, what is it, Douglas? I'm a bit busy. Oh, yes, I'm sure you are, sure. I mean, we were always busy, aren't you? you know, take last night, for instance. Um, having to rush away from the party like that. I mean, it was very... Uh, and professional. We've all said how much we admired you. What? Anything interesting, was it? Ah. I know what this is all about, Douglas. Oh, do you? And I appreciate how very awkward it is for you. Yes, well, it is rather. How do you know? I can read you like a book, Douglas. Oh. And, uh, you're not offended? Offended? Of course I'm not. I'm touched. Sorry? I know what you've been hearing. Paper in trouble. Bankruptcy staring me in the face. I do tend to lay it on a bit thick. But bless you, Douglas. 
I don't need the money. You don't? No. But it's very kind of you to offer. It's always a nice moment when you find out who your real friends are. And now, I don't want to appear ungracious, but after I left you last night, I spent an incredibly boring evening closeted with a visiting Bowles team. There you go. Ah, he's the rest of my alibi. That's a thousand per safe you owe me. Fair enough. Who saw this then? Oh, Sherlock Holmes, he bet me that there was no such thing as a perfect alibi. Thanks to you and Cloppy is there, I've been able to demonstrate that he does not know his alibis from his elbow. <laughs> good for you. Mind you, it's a good thing he wasn't investigating your alibi, girl. You'll never guess what she did last night. She only got herself lost. He was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Teach me to think I know my way around a place when I've only been here a few weeks. I went for a walk uh, down by the harbour and uh, could I find my way back? This is probably the best part of two hours. I was really worried. Oh, he's such a buzzpot. You worry too much, Frankie. <laughs> so, Henley Dodd's out because of the bowls match. Frank's out because of Cloth Ears and Molly. Delgado, if the copper checks out. Captain Ramirez, yeah. I haven't been able to find him yet. Well, you didn't tell me it was Ramirez. Why does it matter? Well, the reason you haven't been able to find him yet is that he's in Madrid. Bastard. Well, that's it then. Well, not necessarily. We don't want to go jumping to conclusions. I think we should still tail all three of them. You take Delgado. Douglas can have Molly. I'll keep my eyes on Metcalf, OK? And uh, what about Linda? Look. Never mind about Linda. I'll take care of Linda. Don't tell me it hasn't crossed your mind. Not even for a moment? No. Not even for a moment. That's very unprofessional of you. Oh, Linda, bugger professional. When was the last time I was a professional? Lee. No, I mean it. All right, back home I did something that was occasionally useful. I took some particularly nasty public menaces off the streets, but here it's just petty thieving and pickpockets, and here's my wife sleeping with her husband. Now this lot. You've been doing some thinking, haven't you? Yeah, I have. We'll sort this lot out first, though, eh?
I know. Bloody awful, isn't it? Just collected your winnings, have you, Matt Carr? I knew it. I knew I'd never get away with it. Look, Blake, I mean, <laughs> there's no need to tell anyone about this, is there? Oh, I beg your pardon? Well, I oh, know, I know, you know, after what I said to you uh, the other day, but I mean, I mean, I mean, couldn't this just, you know, be our little secret? Our little secret? You're not by any chance harboring some quaint notion about pleading insanity, are you? All right, all right. I might have known you'd take the attitude. I suppose I do deserve it. And I suppose it could be argued that I let the side down. Let the side down? Uh, yeah, that might cross the minds of a few particularly narrow-minded people. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Well, I've only done it for a few weeks. It's the first time I've won anything. Um, well, uh, just out of interest, mate, Carl, uh, how, how much did you, did you win? About 20 pounds. Well done. OK. Ah, your stake won't be a minute. Sweetheart, you have a nice afternoon. Oh, yes, very nice. You're right, you're looking a bit picky. Actually, I don't feel too clever, no. Um, I hope I'm not coming down with something. You want me to get a doctor? No, no. I tell you what, I I'll just go and have a, a lie down for a bit. Don't worry. I I'll be fine, really. <laughs> what the hell are we going to do? Why, oh, why, oh, bloody, why do we have to find out? We didn't have to find out. So, why don't we just carry on as though we never did find out? You mean keep quiet about it? Mm. And go and drink with Frank day after day while he goes on and on about Molly and how warm she is and lovely and generous and all the time she's making a fool of him behind his back. Is that what friends do? <laughs> Out of there, Dallas. What, you think we should tell him? Is that what friends do? his heart. Uh, next time I'm coming back as a hermaphrodite. I strongly advise the rest of the human race to do the same. Douglas, I wonder if it would be possible for us to have a little talk. Yeah, all right. Stevie, would you mind? Sure, no trouble, yeah. See you at Frank's, OK? Expect uh, you are displeased with me. Displeased? Bloody hell, Delgado! How many unattached women would you say there are in Marbella? Oh yes, I know, but they are not Molly. Oh please! Oh no, no, no! You don't understand. Let me explain. You think I have a really nice life, don't you, Douglas? <laughs> a rather nice job, making a reasonable amount of money, my daughter safely married, plenty of, as you say, unattached women, no worries, no problems. My life is empty, Douglas. Delgado. Oh, no, no, my life is empty. And Molly sees that. She, she, she understands that. She sees the emptiness and wants to fill it. She almost, almost needs to fill it. Yes, that's all very well, Delgado, but she is Frank's wife. No, she's not. Well, yes, but in name only. Even so. She are not sharing a bed, you know. I didn't know that, but, 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 well, nevertheless, I mean, I'm sure Frank would like to... Would like maybe to... Frank would like it, and maybe I would like, and maybe under the circumstances, as you English say, all is fair in love and war. What? You're not saying you're in love with her. I don't know what you mean by love, Douglas. All I'm saying is that, for the moment, she has given to me a sense of purpose that hasn't been there for a long time. She has, she has breathed new life into me. She goes away, you know. What? That's what Frank says. After a certain amount of uh, filling the emptiness and breathing new life and so on and so forth, she loses interest. Goes off to look for someone else in need of emotional resuscitation. Maybe that was the case with Frank, of course. But I think things are rather different with Molly and myself. Taxi! <laughs> Oh, Stevie, you should have seen his face. It was as if I caught him stocking up on his porn videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, how about you? How'd you get on? Well, 
one. They're both out of it. Yeah? Where were they? I'll tell you later. What do you mean, tell me later? No. We know where they were. It wasn't that. They're both out of it. Well, what's the... They weren't together, were they? Keep your voice down, Chris. They were. Bloody hell. Blake! What's your Frank? Hey, there. She's gone. Hey? She's gone. I want to see if she was all right, and I just found this. No. Dear Frank, you know how I hate goodbyes. So take care of yourself. Thanks for the lovely holiday. Molly. Why? Why would you go? I mean, just like that. Why would you do that? I don't know, Frank. I mean, I can't imagine. It must have been her. Blake, it couldn't have been her. She was with Delgado. Look, she was wandering around for two hours, right? Even if she was knocking off Delgado for most of that time, how long did it take to come onto a boat and rip off a lottery ticket? Then why isn't she cashed them? Because you and Stevie found out about her and Delgado. She panicked, flew back home to England. I don't know. She probably ripped them all up and flushed them down the Kazi. All right, so what are you saying? We just say goodbye to 75,000 quid? No, tomorrow we go to the police. We make it official. Blake, no. Douglas, there's no other way. Unless, as Stevie says, you want to wave goodbye to 75 grand. <laughs> or do you? Oh, well, in that case, I think I'll pop down to Frank's for a quick drink. Well, there's still anybody left in town prepared to drink with me. Yeah, me and all. Ah, uh, no, I'm going to hang around for a while. I'll see you later. OK. Molly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you really want to know the truth, I'm actually quite pleased about it. Yeah? Yeah, well, it's easier the third time around. <laughs> and she was bound to do it sooner or later, so uh, better sooner than later. Otherwise, I might have started getting emotionally involved again, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I suppose you're right. Whereas, uh, this way, well, well, sure, I'll miss her, but, um, well, nothing I can't handle. Frank. Come on, you blokes, then. How is the world treating you? Oh, you know, old boy, mustn't grumble. No, I mustn't grumble. Are you going to have a drink? Come on, you may as well eat on that. Well, that's really very civil of you, Frank. Scotch and brandy? Do it. Huh? For your help. Salute. Huh? Cheers. Cheers. Good on you. Oh, Hello, lads. Have a nice drink. Why are you all so cheerful about all of a sudden? Well, I've been thinking and uh, I've come to a decision. Douglas is right. Eh? No, no, he's, he's absolutely right. Friendship is more important than money. So let's let's call the whole thing off. Uh, that's uh, not quite what I said. Oh, it is what you said, well, it's what you meant to say. And you're quite right. I mean, <laughs> how can we possibly call in the police to investigate our friends? I was something as, as, as trivial and meaningless as money. Trivial and meaningless? Hmm. 75,000 quid. I mean, what is that, Blake? 
You know, what is that when you set it against the friendship of people like Henley Dodd and Metcalf? It's nothing. He's cracked up. No, he hasn't. He's found them. You have, haven't you? You've found the tickets. You found the tickets? How could I possibly have done that, Douglas? Stevie. <laughs> they're, um, they're staring you in the face. They have been all along. Honestly, take a look around. Take a good look around. A couple of smart detectives like yourself shouldn't have much trouble. Oh, uh, Douglas is getting warm. He's getting warmer, warmer, warmer. And now he's getting colder. Uh, now listen, sunshine. And um, Blake is getting hot. That's the understatement of the year. To give up. Okay, look behind you. Metcalf's bloody sticker. Who put that there? Ah, Metcalf put it there. Metcalf? <laughs> the other night, after I came back for my jacket, Metcalf must have sneaked aboard the boat with his poster, and in the dark, peeling the back off the poster, must have accidentally dropped it sticky side down on the desk, and then taking it to the door, not realising. Tickets were stuck on the desk. Oh, get the back! <laughs> oh, stop the old bugger! Now, what about my donation? <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to do with your share of the winnings, Douglas? Oh, I don't know. I haven't really thought. I haven't thunk in yet. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing I'm definitely going to do is spend two weeks in the Lake District. What's in the Lake District? Me. Only for a fortnight, until I pack up my rusty stethoscope and march back to the crumbling wards. Oh, that's, that's great. That's good. Well, have a really wonderful time. Actually, I suppose we could both jet back and forth to the UK now whenever the mood takes us. Well, the thing is, Douglas, uh, it might turn out to be more than just a holiday. You, you mean a honeymoon? No! <sighs> Easy with the Barbara Carland. No, it's just... This is empty. There's another one in the fridge. I'll go and get one, shall I? So what you're saying is, you're thinking of staying? I'm thinking about it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I mean, it's your... Um... This is Linda, I take it. Partly. It's not just that she's going home, Douglas, it's why she's going. Getting back to reality, I suppose. I thought you'd like it here. I do. I do. It's all right. But let's face it. I mean, I haven't exactly taken several giant steps forward. I, I regard you as being here as rather a giant step. Yeah, I know you do, Douglas. I know you do. Look. Look, don't take this the wrong way, all right? I mean, don't misunderstand me. But, I mean, you have led a pretty dull life. Oh, I'm sure nobody could do that the wrong way. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. It's not a criticism. You had a good marriage, good job. But it was all just, you know, a little bit dull. Exactly. But I can see how this is wonderful and magical for you. Just being here. The boat, the sun, free and easy way of life. It's all wonderful and exciting. Yeah, I take your point, I take your point. So, so what you could do is go back and uh, put in 10, 20 or 25 very dull years of your own and by then, well, this place might be magic to you as well. Yeah, more than likely. Of course, by then I'd be, uh, how old would I be? Well, let's work it out. Um... I'm back. <laughs> I, I come back again. Senora? <laughs> That's your own mess. She cannot do the job. She is too old. It will be a to see ya. Well, actually, we thought she was rather... Um... No, 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 no. I must do it. I ask the Lord in the chapel. And he say, it is my duty. He say to me, Maria, what good is it to be rich in money unless you are also rich here? No, no, no. Here, in my, in my heart. What's up in you? Hola. Hola. She spent it all. Toy boys, crack, <laughs> tragic. Story. Well, I found it. 
But I'm damned if I can open it. Well, I wouldn't hold it like that. Give it to Douglas. He knows what to do with it. Right. Here we go. <sighs> oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Here's to... Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs>